definition and I've used recently, uh, you might actually have Docker images that you develop locally. And many users just upload them to the Docker Hub so you can pull it down. And it's not necessary, actually. Uh, that is, again, related to something we've been trying to solve from Bianca. And the users had the Docker, and they know that they converted, but it was, I mean, you can't put it in Docker Hub. So you can pull it from there. Uh, another way is, of course, you convert it on a machine outside and then pull it, uh, bring it to Bianca. But what was the easiest way is that because they were getting this developed on a, a computer in the lab. So you get, they get that one uh, part. And you can bring that one on the, uh, any machine and you can start directly from the tar file, Docker archive. That's what I was mentioning before. And it will convert it directly to a singularity container. It was amazing. I mean, I didn't know it. So it was like they were asking for a step missing. And it's like, oh, this is cool. This is what I mentioned that I've been using. It's like I have my own Docker and I experiment. I'm running. And then at the end, Docker daemon communicates with the local daemon on the computer. So again, I don't need to push it even to the Docker hub. Nothing goes even there. So. I wrap it in a Docker because they have the nice routines and etc. And I don't want to rewrite it because when they update it, I'm out of the game. So instead of that one, I'm pulling the Docker that I'm playing with and I just wrap it in singularity. So this is the other probably short, not many install um, without too much explanation. If you're at that stage, that's what you need. A simple example. What I will suggest also, we are not taking a break, perhaps. Uh, we, I will get exhausted at some point. Ah, I didn't mention that one. That was silly. Upmax in a can. That's a project from a silo of lab, colleague of mine. Uh, I can't go through the whole idea, but I can explain what it is. Uh, you can have a project to Naraka. You can run on Rackham, but you, you will have limits of the time, depending how much you've been granted. Uh, you might actually find out that you have a powerful machine at your lab, but you don't have the tools that are available on Rackham. So what can you do? And this is really neat. I'm not saying that this is the only way to solve it, but they've been spending some time and it seems that they're they are using it not extensively, but the idea is like, I have a computer, it has like 16 CPUs, it's decent, but I don't have, I, I don't have money to buy all the compilers or there is a ton, literally more than a thousand packages installed on Rackham, which are bioinformatics oriented. You run this container, which is actually mimicking a uh, compute nodes it has exactly the packages and setup of a compute node on Rackham, except that it doesn't have the integration with Slurp and things like that. But what it means at that point, you can actually have the module system, that's easier. And you can start running tools that are installed on Rackham on your own computer resources without changing anything. It's just, it could be the lab computer that you have uh, in the basement or somewhere where it, where it is set up. And you just all of a sudden jump into an environment which is a CentOS version seven with all the libraries capable to run the models, I mean, the software that are available on the models. So choose one, try it. It's really nice. I've been, I mean, by that time, it works. <laughs> if it doesn't work, this is the good. You can always um, contact the, um, let's say, the developer. Is there are two developers at least involved? Uh, I'm pretty confident that they will reply back. If they don't tell me, I will make them reply. <laughs> so you have their full support. So it's uh, okay. I didn't go there. 
but uh, let's see, 2020, uh, they promised to update something, but they claim that it works, so it's not a problem. Martin Dallo, if, if you know him, and then I guess, yeah, those are the two guys. Your includes. Okay, let's see if I have forgotten something. Yes, not, not very important anymore, but uh, I have collected some interesting cases, which are kind of illustrating different uh, solutions. And there is no easy way to systematize it because they are rather spread out. But sometimes you ask me and it's much easier that I can direct you to a solution that I have on that web page. This is my idea. I use it myself because uh, I, this is refined. I have much more things collected here and there, but this is kind of, okay, this is official. I can put it and it works and it's tested and etc. So this is, for instance, uh, I've been keep replying in the chat and saying that you can't run services. But that's not entirely true. All of the services are actually nicely done to run on a computer via this system daemon, where they start after each other, there is a dependency. You won't start a tool that needs internet before bringing internet up before and etc. That one is kind of overkill to have it uh, on a Docker, absolutely overkill to have it in a Singularity. Usually by the time you run Singularity, you have all the prerequisites done, like uh, running uh, internet, you have graphical interface, X server available, and etc. So that was about a software, believe it or not, but, but this is also virtualization, flat pack. This is why I'm saying I am giving up. So the only way to install that one is via Flatpak. The problem is that the user want that, wanted that one on Bianca. And this was painful because you, you need to trick Bianca to look instead of in the internet in somewhere which, which you say, okay, I mean, there's something broken with the internet, but by the way, you can find it in the cache. I know that this is still not solved case. It's actively trying to resolve. But if you look on the documentation somewhere, it's bared down. They have a solution with running Docker. So you can pull it from Docker Hub. So if you have a machine where you can run Docker, everything is running nicely. And then it's like, since it's really a single command, only one, it's like, okay, by the way, why don't try if it works? Because if it doesn't work, okay, if we need, we might look on it. But if by chance works without any intervention, then I'm good to go. And that's the case. You just pull the Docker, runs, 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 runs. And at the end, it even starts Gmail server listening across Gmail server. It's just because it doesn't do, doesn't need the system daemon. It does a proper start of the services. And then those are exposed. You open the browser, everything works as smooth as, and uh, I mean, this is how it looks like. It's, I don't know, it looks perfect. And that was for the price of a single content. It's just your, I mean, I realized in this case, I was lucky and the user. Uh, I, if you're interesting, you can look on the, some Conda installations, but this is again pointing toward offline installations. But did I say somewhere, there is a better way to do it. So you don't need to go all the way to uh, Singularity to solve this particular case. I just brought it there as an idea. Or Finder. Yeah, that's the other one. Very common case. Uh, you get tools, and for one reason or another, they don't come with the sources. So the developers provide binaries, pre-compiled binaries that you can just download. Unfortunately, most of them, if they were developed a year or two back, 
they are on a modern system. They require a newer GCC that we have on uh, Raka. So fixing that one is kind of too much efforts. Instead of that one, you can literally, <laughs> in this case, yeah, that's a good example. Now I'm not using uh, any more Ubuntu, but I'm using Rocky Linux, which is the uh, long-term equivalent of CentOS after they dropped the long-term support. So the developer has provided binaries for that system. It says tested on Rocky Linux 8.5. Yep, I can do that. So you can recognize the same. Now, Yum is the uh, Red Hat package manager. So you need to install and figure out some dependencies, but Yum has actually, at, I have to say at some point, I really like it. It's really clean. That one will pull the indexes. This will install everything and this will clean the cache. I mean, at that point I got everything and then I cleaned all the mess up after me. Uh, I don't know how to do the caching tip, uh, tricks, but I, I didn't need to do it. This is the trick to download the tool or the binaries or finder. You just unzip it, change it to binary and they're, they're done. You build it this way and you run it. And you notice I named the, the, the run script runs the tool because it's only one binary. The only problem is the bloody GCC dependency. If I name that one with the name or or finder the tool, I can actually pretend that this is the tool itself, the compiled binary, although that's actually the name of the container which runs the binary inside the container. And this is quite commonly done with this snake make or next wall. Let me see. And yes, it will actually take also the common clients, everything you see, it picks up help. It prints so clean that you, I mean, literally, if I don't have to tell you that it's running a container. Unless you're picky, you won't even notice. What else? This was something that I bring quite often. Let's see. VCF stats. Is this the original? I, the story was um, I helped a group that also had a problem that they were um, collaborating three labs, perhaps. Well, let's let's stick with three. And they had few tools that they developed. Those were pet, Python. Let's see if this is the one if I recognized. Uh, probably not. But the story is behind this. They need the tools and they need the prerequisites. It's a couple of you know, tools that they need to have installed. So it's like you write your Python program, but you don't want to uh, program something that is available, like some tools, things like that, or uh, porting uh, Python uh, versions or etc. And this is exactly they work on the same project, and they want to be sure that when they work on certain data, they all use the same tool, same versions, everything. Uh, I will just tell you the story. If you're interested, you will go there. So what they have done is you, they have, they should be the same. If I'm pointing that will be the case. If you look here, they have a Docker file. If you're familiar, that could be actually on uh, certain rules, let's say every time you push or create a new release, you can trigger an action and this Docker file will be used to build a Docker image, which will be automatically pushed on Docker Hub. If you look, it's embarrassingly simple. So probably that's the correct one. What they want is actually nothing, but they have Python 3.9. It's not much exactly, but they want to stick to something that is not uh, causing problems. I see one that I might understand why they went this way. 
uh, Python 3.10 causes problems in some uh, combination with Cyton. I'm speculating. I'm not saying, saying that this is the, the problem. But what it does is actually brings, it's really simple, but it solves so much. So you get the Cyton, you have the poetry that will help you to compile some. Uh, you run poetry, config, virtual, create, creates, etc., etc. It is installed, whatever they have. And if you start the, the container, it will start the BCF statistics tools. Full stop. They don't need any more. I mean, if you sit down, you can do it yourself. And going through the hassle. Instead, what they end up, if I dig it out, you will find this BCF stuff. So every time they, for instance, publish a new release, that gets pushed on Docker Hub. The only thing is for these three labs, everyone who is involved in this project will singularly pull this Docker and have the VCF running on their computer of choice. Local computers, remote computers, Bianca without, uh, without the internet. It's like, why you should bother, I mean, I've been in such situation, I can't guarantee you new, but we had the large projects where I've been running on three computers, three centers, Uppsala, Lean Shopping, and KTH. You make your setup clean and tidy on one computer. Then you need to move to another one, and it's like, yeah, I know how to do it. You do it. And then when you do that one on the third time, you realize, okay, that will go wrong. The moment when you start doing fixes in one places and then you're not lazy or saying, okay, I don't have to fix it now. These three environments gets out of sync and it's really painful when you have a, have a who's been supervisor and then a student comes and of course you need to do the same for them. And then it's you realize that doesn't work anymore. The efforts because if you do that one properly, you have to install the tools, make the setup, and test that actually produces the same results what it uh, produces in the other all the other environment. And that gets painful. And things like that gets really simply solved by such approach. You get a container, and that's what uh, one of your colleagues talking for Snake Make is. Uh, looking to solve with singularity, adding all the tools in one single file so she can get, give it to a supervisor or somebody who collaborates with her and they run it without the hassle, figuring out how to set it up, that one on the, their Linux machine, which might be actually Ubuntu, CentOS, Mac, things like that. Well, they will most uh, probably run on uh, Rackham or some of the HPC. You have zero setup. I'm running out of ideas what to entertain you more. So let's see, there's no questions here and here. Uh, this is me pushing some of the, I, I doesn't have to tell you the story behind. There is a solution, okay. There are bad practices also. Some of the tools are meant to be installed as a user. And when we need to install it on Rackham, it becomes impossible. The reason is that the developer sees no reason to have the configuration files isolated. So they say, okay, this is a one setup for this user. That configuration file comes with the files that are the software etc which points to the databases that the user has and everything when you have to do that one for shared resources installation for all the users uh, on rackham using the same model it becomes impossible and the reason is the file that contains the configuration with the user database which is different for each user it is in the place where it is with the software so if you allow it to be changeable for anyone, what happens is if I'm one user, I will configure it for my database, but next user comes, they will configure it for their database. That 
conflicts. It, I mean, it leads to con obvious conflict. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, on the Git issues is uh, most desirable change that this needs to be separated because people want to share even databases and etc. There is a neat solution with Singularity. Remember when I failed to show you how you can bring the host computers inside the container? That is the solution. The container actually always thinks that this one single configuration, that file, which needs to be shared. But for each user, we point it to a separate file. So all of a sudden, all of, all of a sudden a file which is read-only and you can't change because it should be shared. It becomes writable for each user. And just saying, okay, here is my configuration. Use that one with the container. And you don't have to conflict with everyone, anyone else. So that was such a neat solution for probably three or four softwares that were developed this way. So I'm just giving you ideas. And the last one probably doesn't fit the subject of uh, basic singularity. Until now, I was telling you that the container is read-only. Once you squash it and uh, build it, that's it. It's read-only. Uh, not entirely true. Uh, latest versions after 3.6 or something that I mentioned that should be fine. You can actually do something similar like Docker. Docker have virtual drives. So there is a two alternatives. You can create a virtual drive that you attach to the container. So it's almost like a floppy disk or a USB stick that you can say, now I want to use that one with my container. But that one is not that popular because you can do that one with a folder. It is in your home folder or in the project folder. So that's not the idea. The idea in this case is that uh, you can bring these two files in another machine and you have the container plus all the data packed and they look exactly the same. And there is another option where this second file that I was mentioning, you can incorporate it in the container. Uh, the drawback of that one is that, I mean, the size of uh, such a volume or disk or anything, what you would call it virtual is fixed. So you know, you have to say, okay, it's my USB stick that is writable. It's two gigabytes and your container will grow with two gigabytes just because it needs to allocate space where it will make sure that it can write, which is funny configuration, which means that you can put your data configuration changes, and that will be saved in the container that you can send to somebody else. They will already have that data inside. But then as soon as they start changing, these two containers that look identical, they are different. So that needs, it's not the most popular feature, but I've been using it for a particular solution there. The software wanted to make log files in a weird position. And then it's like, yeah, let it be. I mean, it's create, okay, I can tell. It's like, it needs to create some uh, log files for a internal queue manager. And it wants to keep track of the jobs that were running. And it needs to save it somewhere. And then you need to keep that one inside. So yeah, giving some space. And all of a sudden you have writable space inside the container and the container is back to life. Okay, I'm getting tired. I bet you are also tired. So let's answer if you have questions, something remain unclear, you want to repeat us something, 